The suspect in the botched Christmas bombing may have been motivated by the radical preaching of an American-born Muslim cleric. Anwar al-Awlaki is known uh, as a rock star of sorts among jihadists, and he could be the next bin Laden. CNN senior international correspondent Nick Robertson has our special investigation. The Islam of Amr was an opening. His hijrah was victory. Anwar al awlaki Rain was mercy. The radical Yemen-based preacher, seen here online. His followers in Britain say he's like Osama bin Laden. And he said, hand me over your scrolls. This is the same Amwar al awlaki who exchanged emails with Major Nidal Hassan, accused of killing 13 people at Fort Hood. After the killings, Awlaki praised Hassan on his website, calling him a hero. Seven years ago, he moved from the U.S. to London and was still here when the alleged Christmas Day bomber Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalab began university here. Intelligence agencies are investigating the possibility they met. This is the mosque where Anwar Awlaki did most of his preaching in London. There has been no indication Abdul Muttalab met Awlaki here. But during the young Nigerian's three years in London, he almost undoubtedly met some of Awlaki's admirers. Abu Muaz was one of the thousands who flocked to Awlaki's lectures. He was well revered, people loved him, people loved his classes, people loved the way he explained things. For these radical Muslims in London, with whom Abdul Muttalib shared a hatred of the United States and the war in Iraq, Awlaki was God's messenger. But not for everyone. Osama Hassan was once a radical himself. He met Awlaki and heard him speak at a London mosque in 2002, telling the congregation police had mistreated a fellow Muslim. And this is an insult to Islam and we have to do something about it. It's actually very dangerous to work people up and say, let's do something about it. And if they don't know how to channel that, they will, they will take it out somewhere. Hassan has since turned his back on extremism, but found out later, in private, Awlaki expressed even more extreme views. Behind closed doors, I was told he, he conducted a uh, closed study circle in which he was justifying suicide bombings, for example, including um, in the West. Justifying suicide bombings? Justifying suicide bombings against um, civilians. That could he regarded them as a legitimate target. Awlaki was eventually banned from visiting the UK. Even though Anwar Awlaki can't come back into Britain, he's still getting his message out. Box sets of his DVDs are openly on sale, selling for about $100 each. And the storekeeper here says they're among his hottest selling items because most people buying them believe Awlaki is mainstream. Whether on DVDs, the internet, or behind closed doors, <laughs> Awlaki has inspired people to terrorism. In London, court transcripts reveal that at least some of the group that conspired to blow up passenger jets en route to the U.S. in 2006 were Awlaki devotees. So too, terrorists in Toronto, convicted of planning to blow up targets in Canada. And in the United States, the six men arrested in May 2007 and convicted of planning to kill soldiers at Fort Dix in New Jersey. What you are hearing are three of the Fort Dix plotters praising Awlaki. Awlaki is influential because of his background. He was born in the United States. His father was a minister in the Yemeni government. He is smart and privileged. He preached at Imam Jahari Malik's mosque in Virginia. Young, handsome, Californian, has the benefit of English without an accent and who also is proficient in the Arabic language. In fact, he is technically an Arab. 
What better mix? The imam doesn't agree with al-Laki, but it was at his mosque al-Laki met two of the 9-11 bombers, although there is no evidence he knew what they were planning. But what's on everyone's mind now is what influence al-Laki may have had on a young Nigerian, either here or in Yemen. Nick Robertson, CNN, London.